Lord you brought me. Oh, let the church say amen. I was glad when he said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go and rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice. Our announcements for the morning. Our Sunday school classes. They begin at 915 here at the church with Deacon Jackson and on Facebook. Our women's class with Sister Helen. Our class with Sister Coleman on Zoom. And our youth, which are taught downstairs. Our ways of giving. You can give by text or you can give online. You can give by mail or debit card or credit card or live at the church. Amen? Our weekly announcements. We have a thank you card from the family of Miss Sandra Marie. It says, Pastor and family, thank you for all your prayers and support to us. Amen? second Sunday in April, which is April the 9th, at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Social distance will be in place, and everyone is asked to wear a mask. AT&T is holding a job fair on tomorrow, Monday, 321-22, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The address is 1876 Data Drive, Hoover, Alabama. Thank you, Sister Annie Fox Thomas. Then I have a very special announcement. It's, it's for our pastor. The Bible says, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Galilee Baptist Church will be honoring Pastor Coleman and Sister Coleman on the first Sunday in April. 34 years of pastoral excellence. There will be a formal program. However, we will recognize and celebrate Pastor Coleman's 34th anniversary with our love offerings. We ask that each auxiliary represent and each member bless Pastor with love offering. Amen? Amen. 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 34 years is a long time. sickness and in health. So we all celebrate that God has given him the strength to continue. We have a good pastor. Not, not only that, we have the best pastor on this side of heaven. Amen? Amen. Our scripture reading for the morning, it comes from the book of Psalm. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Let me read that again. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear therefore and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my friends. The word of God for the people of God. Amen.
hold it, she's blessed. I'll take it any way you give it to me. It's a blessing coming from the Lord. Amen. Church is prayer time. Now, 
God, we ask that you bless our children. God bless them in a special way. There's so much going on, Father. We just, they don't know which way to turn right now. And God, we ask that you turn them towards you instead of these streets. God, we ask that you keep them safe. Keep our educators, God. Keep blessing them to keep blessing our children, to keep teaching our children. Lord God, just thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for all that you, you've already done. God, thank you for what you're doing right now. God, thank you for what you're about to do. We don't know what it is, but, I, but we know it's, it's good as long as it's with you. Thank you, Father. Now, God, we ask that you bless the shepherd of this house. God, we ask that you crown him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, we ask that you bless his family. Keep them safe, God. Uplift them when they're, when they're down, God. God, give them that strength, that peace, that pass on. Lord, we ask that you keep Sister Coleman. Bless her in a special way, God. As only you can. Now, God, these are other blessings we do ask in Jesus' precious name. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And all of your children that agree say, Amen. Amen.
Bridget, would you play a little bit more of that? Just think about it. You never would have made it. You never let somebody here go into sleep on you. You never would have made it without him. Do I have some witnesses in here? Before Paul 
was converted. He was an arch enemy of the Christian church. Yes, sir. He was an arch enemy of the Christian movement. And I want to emphasize to you this morning the Christian church because there have always been various churches. Even now there are various churches. My Christian friends, so there are all kinds of churches, but I want to emphasize the Christian church. Well, Paul had fought aggressively against the Christian movement and had participated in the stoning of one of the first deacons of the early church. Paul himself, who named before his conversion, if you recall, was named Saul. Yeah. He did not throw a stone at Stephen, but he was a participant. Well. Do I have a witness? Yes, sir. He, he, and thus made his convention for those who wanted to throw stones. Paul's conversion shocked many of the people of his own time, both Christian and non-Christian. Words went out that Saul is changed. He's a changed man and now possesses a new name. No, language, no longer was his name called Saul, but now they call him Paul. And when God truly enters our lives through his son, Jesus Christ, as a result of having received Jesus into our lives as our personal Savior, predicated on our personal belief in Christ. Jesus, a change will take place. Yes, not, not a goosebump experience, well. but a change in your life. Yes, Do I have a witness? Yes, the songwriter wrote, in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. He goes on to say, I have joy yeah. in my soul Hello. for which long I have sought since Jesus Amen. came in Amen. to my heart. Yeah. He's going to say that I, I have joy yeah. in my soul yeah. for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah. Now this morning, let, let me survey the congregation and the conference assembled here this morning. How many of you can testify without a hesitation? Do I have a witness there? Well, well. Can, you can you stand and testify that he changed My life. Don't, don't you fool me this morning. Don't, don't, don't sit like you're going to sleep. Move around. But you all stand up and just say, I've been changed. Yes, yes you, you ought to give him praise and glory. Saul, no longer Saul, but he's Paul. Do I have a witness? When you think about it, its only letter was remove the S and the S from sin. The S for stony heart. S for stone hearted. The S was removed from and P put 
in his place. Once named Saul, but now he's Paul. Right. Peace stands for prayer. Peace stands for place. Right. Peace stands for perseverance. Right. My Christian friend, Paul became a great warrior for the cause of Christ. Oh, the record tells us that in time of our text, this great warrior writes his second letter to the Corinthian people. His pen, his second letter to the Christians at the city of Corinth. He informed them and personally testified to them about a situation yes, sir. Yes, sir. about a predicament mm -hmm. which existed in his life. Yeah. I said on many occasions that it's my strong belief that every child of God ought to have a terrible testimony. Right. Yeah. Let me say it again. I, I, I think everybody, no matter how high class you think you are, you ought to have a testimony. Do, do I have some effort here today? I, I think you ought to personally sometimes testify to them about the things you've been through. And, 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 and every one of God's children ought to be equipped with a personal story. Yeah, yeah, not, not just only when God came in your life, but since he's been in your life. Do I have a witness? Every now and then, you ought to be motivated and stimulated to share your testimony. Do I have a witness here? What, what, what use in having a testimony when you never share it? Don't, don't worry about them non-testimony folk. Sometimes we get in church and we get scared of what folk may think. But it was the law. I said, that's it. It was the law. And the neighbor say, it was the law. That brought me where I am now. Do I have a witness here? Well, the songwriters say, if the Lord has blessed you, has blessed your soul, you ought to tell it. If he made you whole, you ought to tell it. If he been food on your table, you ought to tell it. Do I have a witness? And he said, if you couldn't express it verbally, you ought to be able to. Just wave your hand. Because you know that God is able. Am, am I talking to somebody? And if God has truly been into your life, if Christ has made a change in your life, you are not mind telling folks that the Lord. I said that not you. That the Lord has been good to you. Do I have some help here today? Yes. Another songwriter said, In my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Do I have a witness? He goes on to say that I have joy. Do I have some witness? In my soul. For which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. Behind, sometimes we have smiles on our faces. But hurting on the inside. Do I have a witness? Oh, let me share you. My brothers and sisters, that persons who sometimes are smiling, but you never know what's hiding behind the smile. Amen. Behind the smile, sometimes 
can hide a wounded spirit. Yeah. Behind a smile sometimes hides a grieving heart. Yeah. Behind a smile sometimes hides an individual who had been oppressed, yeah. who had been depressed, yeah. or been in distress, yeah. abused and misused. Yeah. Behind a smile sometimes hides uncertainty. Do I have a witness here? As what the end is going to be. Do I have a witness here? Smiles have a way of sometimes being cosmetic. Do I have a witness here? What you mean, Reverend? You get up in the morning, take your bath, put your makeup on. But you also got to put your smile on. Sometimes you don't, you can wash and clean, but you, that smile, you have to put it on. Yeah. You hurt on the inside. Troubles on every side. We just put on cosmetically and go around hoping that everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Do I have a witness there? Well, because you never know something may show up yeah. and take that smile off of it. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. But I've learned to live. Yeah. Put my smile on in the morning. Yeah. Get out the door. I ask God every morning, Lord, let me run into the right folk. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness there? I don't want to run into the wrong people. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Well, somebody shared with me, they may be going through some terrible ordeals in life. Yeah. You may have no idea, and it may be too personal for them to even share it with you. Yeah. But I do know one thing, that the Lord has picked Somebody here, I know you're quiet, don't go to sleep on me. We ought to have a testimony. Yeah. That the Lord has. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. We ought to have a testimony. Yeah. Second, we ought to have a testimony not only because the good that can do for others, yeah. but for the good that can do for you. Yes, sir. And, and how far the Lord has brought me from. I, when I tell my testimony, when God has brought me a mighty long way. And I'm not in this house by myself. I, I used to be a devil. And, I, and I'm not the only one. Yeah. I got some more used to be in this house. Do I have a witness here? But I'm glad that the Lord bought me a mighty long way. Do I have a witness here? Paul said, I besought the Lord. He said, I besought the Lord thrice. In other words, he said, Lord, help me. I got this thorn in, in my side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got this Lord, 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 help me. Yes, sir. I, I need you right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This thorn is bothering me. Yes, I, I need to get the thorn out. But Lord, help me. Yes, sir. But then listen at what the Lord told Paul. He said, no. He is a man that loved the Lord with all his heart. Paul asked him three times, help me, help me, help me. And the Lord said, no. It, 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 I, I don't know about you, but I've 
believe that you've been there before. Yes, sir. But you ask the Lord to help you. Yes, sir. The Lord didn't move. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? You asked him the second time and he didn't move. You asked him the third time, but he didn't move. He asked him that it might depart from me. Do I have a witness here? But then he said to Paul, look Paul, I, I want you to know something. You got this storm. I know that it's bothering. Yes, sir. And sometimes God give us storms. You have thorns in your children. You have thorns in your family. Do I have a witness? And sometimes they get to be a thorn in your side. But then notice what Paul, what he said. He said, no to Paul. But then here's the key. He said unto me, my grace gives sufficient. Do I have a witness here? I, I, I'm trying to tell, preacher, sometimes to tell you that sometimes thorns will be in your flesh. Sometimes things can really bother you. But I come to tell everybody today, my grace, I said my grace. My grace, he said, is sufficient. Paul said, listen to what Paul said here. He said, most glad. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Therefore, I will let up glory yeah. in my infirmity. Yes, sir. Even though I got the thorn in my flesh. Yeah. Can, can I preach here today? Yeah. Even though you got a thorn in your flesh. Yeah. Paul said, I'm going to serve you to the end of the day. Yes, and I don't care who you are. Whatever the thorn is in your flesh. Yes, the Lord got it there for a reason. Yes, he got it there from so you'll stay close to him. Because if he takes the thorn away, you'll walk off and leave him. But ain't you glad? I said, ain't you glad? Yes, Listen to what Paul said, most glad. In other words, I got the thorn in my flesh. Yeah. But he said, that's all right, for I will bet the glory in my infirmity and the power of Christ. Yeah. In other words, I got the power in the thorn. Yeah. I, I got power that's in the thorn. Yeah. It keeps me humble. Yeah. It keeps me serving the Lord. Yeah. And aren't you glad today, even though you got a thorn in your flesh. God has been good. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Even though the thorn may be in your family, but you're still holding on. Yes, thorn may be in your spouse, but you're still holding on because the Lord has. He's been good to you. Do I have a Thank you. 
his light and gave the young man a light and went on to the store, came back home, and he slept all night long. Well, the next morning, he turned the news on. He saw the picture of the same young man that met him that night. The old man got so puzzled. He told his granddaughter, said, granddaughter, I'm going down to the jailhouse. This man I met last night has killed two people. I'm going down. I said, I'm going down. I'm going to meet this young man. The old man said, you remember me. I'm the one that gave you a life last night. The old man said, why didn't you kill me? Like you killed the other two men. The young man said, when you struck the light, there was a man standing behind you. It looked like the sun God. I had to go head on. Do I have to bring this here? Thank you. 
blessed. He said, my grace is sufficient. Thank you, Lord. Good enough, and we're going to get you out of here. The second Sunday, first Sunday, we'll be and make the announcement. Sister Coleman and I, anniversary. We've been here 34 years. That's a blessing before God. It's not going to interfere. I know we that's communion Sunday. Uh, it's not going to interfere with our communion. But we just want to, y'all show me a little love. Show my wife a little love. Amen. Amen. You know, my, amen. The second Sunday, we're going to delight you. I mean, ordain our minister, Jeffrey Webb. I need him on my team. Amen. Amen. We're going to ordain him. Second Sunday, he's going to preach his own ordination. And we're going to ordain him. Amen. He's been preaching 10 years. And have not been ordained. I've been knowing him many years. Thank God that I, I do know him. God sent him here. Him and his lovely wife, I want to thank you for them. And then on that Sunday evening, what time did John? We're going to order, uh, install one of our young sons, Brother John Everton too, at First United Missionary Baptist Church. One o'clock? One o'clock, yeah. Okay, one o'clock we're going to leave, and um, um, Reverend Manuel David will bring the word. Amen? Pastor's going to conduct the ordination service. That's a blessing in ordain and install. Our preachers, our preachers are really growing. And on the first Sunday in this month, we're going to have Reverend Jeffrey Black to bring pastor's anniversary message. Amen? Amen. That'll be sun that Sunday morning. Amen? John just talked to him. Amen. Okay. All right. So we hope, and I hope today, that all of you were blessed. Yes, sir. How many of you were blessed today? Yes, sir. Remember, it's God's grace oh. that brought you safe this far. Yes, sir. God has smiled on me.
ਸ਼ੇਰ ਨੇ ਕਹਾ ਕਿ 